if I told you that my belief is being tested. This time is where the rubber truly meets the road. And so because we have had very little, extremely little, we probably know even less than what you all know about this occurrence. I had an immediate conversation with our police chief, Chief Eddie Buffalo, who, by the way, is the president of the North Carolina Chiefs, Chiefs Association. That means he's the chief of all chiefs. In our organization, I refer to our directors as subject matter experts. He is the subject matter experts of all subject matter experts. And I am honored to serve the city and serve him and our police department. Our officers have been absolutely amazing. They started community policing a long time ago. So when this unfortunate chain of events occurred, they continue to do what they've always done, and that is community police. As your manager, I will continue to drive the initiative to create a safe space for all protesters to exercise their First Amendment rights, and our officers on the ground will continue to protect them from all hurt, harm, or danger. It is now the weekend, though, and we know that from protests on weekends, people come in. They are called nomads, and they come in to wreak havoc and leave. And so I'm asking all protesters, if you identify someone or see someone, and they have come here to create trouble and create distractions, that you identify them, and we absolutely have enough officers and we'll have them removed. My plea to all of you is that I need every single person watching and listening to keep your eye on this situation. I don't need any distractions whatsoever to take away from this very fluid and very necessary investigation. So without further ado, I introduce to you our subject matter expert in policing, Chief Eddie Buffalo. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, before I start, I echo the same sentiments of our mayor, and I extend heartfelt sympathy to the Brown family, to their friends, and even to this community at large. Since the events unfolded on Wednesday morning, approximately 8 a.m. The Elizabeth City Police Department did not have any involvement with the service of the arrest warrant or execution of the search warrant. The Elizabeth City initial uh, call for service was uh, shots fired. Our officers responded, found out that it was an officer involved shooting involving the Pasquotank County Sheriff's Office. Immediately we went into scene security and perimeter security. Uh, since that time we have trans position over to a operational period to provide life safety, property safety, as well as to allow protesters to peacefully protest. We have done that without any arrest at this point, and we have done that without any property damage within the city at this point. Those efforts have continued since Wednesday and possibly through the weekend. Our officers are vigilant and will remain vigilant throughout the weekend, and we're also doing our daily responsibilities and answering our daily calls for services as well, along with uh, providing uh, protection for our motoring public as well as our protesters here within the city. We will stay vigilant, and we ask the community to remain peaceful, as you have, and if you have any questions or comments, please reach out to us on our Facebook page or you may contact our office directly. At this time, I'll turn it back over to our city manager, and that's the involvement from the police department. And thank you for coming. I purposely kept my mask on for the first part. And since this would be the last time I would speak before I bring the mayor up to close us out, there are a couple of things. When protests take place, 
it is a lot more than the people you see in the streets. It is the citizens who travel this city who help us by redirecting their traffic and following the directives of the police department. To those citizens who may not be walking in the streets but have exercised great patience, thank you. Thank you for allowing police to redirect you. Thank you for not harassing the protest protesters. Thank you for acting in a fashion of protection to keep our police officers safe. Thank you. The numbers are very, very clear. There are more citizens and more people on the street than we have officers. So thank you for protecting our officers, making their jobs doable, checking on them. I've seen citizens reaching out to them, asking if they were okay, checking on them. Thank you to all the citizens who have been inconvenienced as a result of the protests, but yet you remain passionate and patient. Thank you. It is duly noted, and on behalf of the city of Elizabeth City, I just want to say thank you to all of you who have taken it, taken out of your time and your schedules to be here to help us get this message out. Thank you. You thought it not robbery to spend your Saturday morning with us, and you thought it was due diligence and necessary to the Brown family to be here and help get this message out. Thank you. I truly thank each and every one of you, and I will bring the mayor up now to close us out, and we will take questions off camera or away from this, but I did not want to take away from this opportunity. Thank you all so much. I just want to remind everybody and those who uh, are not from this area that we are the harbor of hospitality. We are a friendly town and a good town to live in. I have been here all my life, so I know. When times like this happen, it kind of overshadows the goodness. But I am quick to remind you that this too shall pass. Now we've shared with you all that we know, uh, and we want to let you know, and we're talking about the citizens of Elizabeth City, that we support you and uh, that we are actually supporting the prote protesters as well, because that's your right. Uh, but we are demanding that we have transparency and accountability. That is important if our citizens are going to trust the elected officials and those who are in law enforcement. So I thank you all for showing up and helping us get our message out. And uh, I would like to leave you with uh, this expression. May God continue to bless each and every one of you, and may peace and harmony be the foremost in our minds. Thank you, and have a great day. I don't know where they are. I have not had any discussions whatsoever. Uh, it is not that I haven't reached out because uh, we have had two emergency meetings. Uh, the first one, of course, was on the same day of the uh, incident. And um, we are live streamed. All of our council meetings are live streamed. And uh, right now you can go to the website uh, of our city, which is cityec.com and you can pull up those videos and see that we have been reaching out. Now, we, this is the first time that we have come before you physically, but that was purposely. As I said earlier, I wanted to give them a chance to have control of the narrative because it was not our department that was involved. On uh, yesterday, uh, I met uh, three of the uh, members of the Brown family uh, when we had our meeting. Mayor, have you seen the body cam video? And if not, do you wish you did? I have not seen it, but uh, if uh, our council has solicited, solicited it, and if we get it, uh, I will watch it. And do you anticipate if the video shows questionable carrying out of laws that there will be accountability for those deputies? Well, 
Uh, I, I don't want to go there. And the reason is, is because there is an investigation that is very fluid. I don't have any idea of what went down. I don't know what they're doing now. So I'm not going to address that at this point. I don't know any more about it than you do. I'm sorry. I hate to seem like I'm being vague, but they have not shared with us. And I don't know the reason. Chief, what's, hey, the, Mayor, relationship like with, what's the relationship like? I mean, normally towns and the sheriff's department, they have to collaborate. Mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the relationship like right now between Elizabeth City Police and the sheriff's department? Is there animosity? Is there I'm going to step back and let our chief address that. There's no animosity between the police department or the sheriff's office. We work in conjunction together, but in this particular case, uh, we were not participating in that particular investigation or case, arrest, or execution of the search warrant. And Mr. Truman, you had mentioned, Chief, this is also for you, you had mentioned that um, you know, because it's the weekend, more protesters could be coming, maybe people from out of town. Do you have indication, or how concerned are you, that a protest like this could be, there could be expression that may be hijacked by a greater cause So that's a two-part question. I'm going to answer the first part, and I'm going to allow the chief to answer the second part. As a manager, I am tasked with protecting the citizens of Elizabeth City and the visitors of Elizabeth City. So I'm not adverse to visitors coming in and joining this very viable and fluid protest. I will continue to issue directives to protect them as well. However, my ask is that if someone decides to be adverse to a peaceful protest, then our officers have to engage that. And if it takes away from it, it becomes a distraction from the matter at hand. And the matter at hand is the transparency and accountability of what took place on Wednesday morning. At the root of all of this is someone lost their life. A citizen of mine lost his life. His kids lost their father, their family members lost their brother, their friends lost a friends. I have employees that work here in the city who were friends with him. And so the root of all of this is that. Um, and I just want to do my part to issue directives to make sure that all people, not just the citizens of Elizabeth City, but those who choose not to march and just want to go to work and make sure they leave in time to drive around the march to allow for a peaceful protest and create a buffer around those people so that they are safe and they don't feel uh, retaliation or that the city is not supporting them. That's what I'm focused on. Now, I will allow the chief to talk through from a subject matter expert standpoint what the weekend means from a policing standpoint. Thank you. Oh. We, we are prepared, uh, and we, we hope that those particular influences from the outside do not come in and disrupt what we have worked very hard for since Wednesday. And uh, we, we're not going to allow any unlawful protests. Do you, do you have a reaction to Governor Cooper calling for the release of the body cam in the New York Times there? Is this larger than Elizabeth? Excuse me, uh, I'm sorry. Your reaction to Governor Cooper calling for the body cam video to be released and your sense of when this is larger than just what's happening here in Elizabeth City? Oh, yes, it is. I, I believe it's larger than what's happening here in Elizabeth City because if you observe or if you have been keeping up with the news, uh, it, it's across the country right now. And I think we, uh, we all are focused on maybe changes coming. Uh, as far as policing and uh, how citizens uh, uh, interact uh, with the policemen. Uh, now, for our Governor Cooper, uh, uh, I have had many conversations with him, not about this. And uh, he is one who, who appears to want the right thing done. And I am really pleased with him coming out indicating that the uh, body cam should be released. Hey, Mayor, how much have you stressed the importance to, or Montre or Chief, the importance the sheriff's office about releasing the body cam video, as you said earlier, not simply to the public, but to the family as well in a timely manner? Well, uh, our uh, manager 
was just with the, uh, the sheriff on yesterday, I believe. So I'm going to let him address that right now. Um, we talked very shortly about that over at the Mount um, Church. There was a, um, an event there, and there were several very influential uh, clergy members there. The sheriff was there, and I was there. I didn't get to stay long because I had to do CNN, but um, he told me that the transparency and accountability was at the forefront of how they were going to be proceeding. Um, they have uh, they have a crisis intervention consultant who they are talking to, um, and so I'm going to hope and trust. I'm, I'm trusting with everything in me. I'm trying with everything in me to believe that they're going to do the right thing. I, I truly believe that the sheriff will once that information is ready. Um, I have every bit of faith in Sparty Hammond, the county manager that he will stand tall and do the same thing as well. Um, but time is truly of the essence, and I'm going to just continue to focus on protecting people as we work through this process. You talked about your budget. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, that is a very good question, but but let me just say this. Um, I'm here as a leader, right? And I don't get to pick and choose when my emotions can be displayed or I don't get to wear them on my sleeve. And so I, I will stay away from that question, um, but I will say that I'm, I'm trying with all that is in me to believe and trust in the process. As an attorney, I'm, I'm trying to believe in what I've been trained to do. Um, Dean Phyllis Craig Taylor, who was the dean at North Carolina Central University School of Law when I was there, said to us all that words are the tools of our trade. And so in that same vein, I want to use my words to empower people and encourage people to continue to do it right such that I can serve them at my very highest level. Thank you. Um, that is also a very good question, but again, I'm just choosing to focus on protecting the citizens of Elizabeth City. I, I, um, I would like to believe that the mayor's comments um, was what should have happened um, because we believe that the county needed to have an opportunity to drive this narrative. Um, but again, we're not in that room. We still have not seen any evidence. We still have not seen any body cam. We have not conversed at length with the county. And so we want to keep that in the county. Um, and we're just going to focus on protecting you and serving. Can I just follow up on that? Because I interviewed one of the neighbors mm -hmm. to Brownstone uh, in a bullet, a straight bullet, went through the entire extent of the house, from the front of the house to the two walls, it was crock pot and was on the floor. Do you or, or Chief or Mayor have concerns about the use of force, how it was carried out, whether it was disproportionate level of force for carrying out a warrant, or could you, could you comment on that as we wait for the investigation? We do have neighbors quite rattled that their home was shot. Um, I was unfamiliar with that piece of evidence, which is again why I don't really speak on evidence. Um, you know, I'm trained to make evidence-based decisions. That's what attorneys do, right? And I don't have that evidence in front of me, and I'm not trying to discredit your statement or your question. Um, but for that reason, I will stay away from that. Now, I will say this. It is still the directive of my office and the directive of our chief's office that we protect our citizens as best we can in all fashions. As I said before, the business of the city never stops. And as unfortunate as this is uh, for the Brown family and all the entities involved, we still have business to attend to. I still have a budget that I need to pass so that I can take care of the citizens of Elizabeth City and pay these amazing people who work for the city to do their jobs, who, by the way, I could never pay them what they're worth. Um, 
And so, great question, sir. I feel and I think the same thing as you do, but I do not have that answer. I'm so sorry. Mr. Young, I was just going to ask about that. Uh, their frustrations are our frustrations. We live here, right? If, if, if you can hear the frustrations of the citizens and imagine our frustrations hearing those frustrations when we've been tasked with serving those citizens. But there's a clear message here, and that is we were not involved, which is why my directive has been on protecting the citizens and the protesters such that I can serve and we can serve and they can serve and we all can serve each other to the best of our abilities. I wish I had those answers, but I don't because we were not involved. And so to that end, I wanted the citizens to understand that and know that and know that I will not waver on how we protect each other. Well, as I said when I was first interviewed, when this first happened as an African-American man and father who's raising a son, it felt like yet another one. That's how it felt. That's how it continues to feel. But I cannot allow myself to stay in that space because I have 18,000 people that I'm responsible for. I got a police department that I'm responsible for. I have taxpayers that I'm responsible for and to. And so as we work through the budget process, you're right. It's going to be extremely impactful because I still have to leave this city. Now, as it relates to the lessons learned, man, we need a whole nother day for the lessons learned. Um, but I will say, uh, and, and, I, and one interviewer said this to me, was that he was unsure but he felt like I might have been the first manager to bring in law enforcement to protect protesters. And so the lesson that I've learned is that the First Amendment is still powerful and is to be protected. And I'm going to do everything I can to continue to do that. The other thing is I pray that this never happens again, ever, not in the city of Elizabeth City, in any other city, and to all the families and law enforcement officers who are dealing with this, my prayers go out to you. Um, but I will continue to stand tall. My lesson that I've learned as a leader and that I will give to all leaders across this nation, across the state, is that continue to do the work because the work still has to get done. Thank you. And Chief, for you, what or what doesn't happen in Pasquotank County, what are your lessons that you take away from this? What changes are you making in your own police department? And what are the initiatives that you're taking? Because maybe this was passed with this time, but it could have been one of your officers. So what changes are you making that you want to be a model for the rest of the country? Well, we have been doing community policing since I've been the police chief here for the last nine years. So our model here has been, we have been embedded within this community for nine years, as I said, in meeting our citizens and being engaged in programs here in this city for our citizens, where we want our law enforcement officers not only to enforce the law, but we want them to be engaging in meeting our citizens, not just on this side, even before we got here, we knew our citizens. And I think that's the real reason why we have lawful and peaceful protests, because we know and we engage our citizens. And we have been doing that since I've been the police chief. But I'm not here to take all the credit, because the men and women who wear this blue uniform within this police department, they have actually bought into that value, because the value is within your community. The value is not after something like this happens. 
and I believe we've deposited that value in our citizens and the members of this No, uh, from a law enforcement perspective, uh, there, there should be, and I believe there is, an internal investigation being conducted by the Pasquotank County Sheriff's Office, as well as a criminal investigation uh, being conducted by the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigations. Uh, so it, that's all I can say on that. I'm not privy to any of the information on either side of that investigation. Uh, as I've said earlier in the press conference, our engagement is, is totally uh, from a reactionary standpoint in providing a peaceful uh, assembly. Chief, how unusual is it or atypical is it for you, your force not to be read in on the service of this kind of warrant by a sheriff's deputy? Uh, I'm not going to say it's uh, unusual. It, it, I didn't know about it. I'm not sure if it was talked about at the lower level uh, amongst those particular units, uh, but I did not know about it and my command staff did not know about it. Uh, usually we work hand in hand, but like I said, in this particular occasion, uh, we, we were not uh, participating in the execution of the search warrant or the service of the arrest warrant. And have you been privy to the contents of that warrant? No, I have not. I have not seen the arrest warrant, nor the search warrant, nor the body camera footage. I just want to say uh, quickly uh, to uh, let you all know that uh, a chief of police, uh, Chief Buffalo uh, is well known in the community and well respected. And uh, his officers are too, because they're referred to as peace officers, not necessarily the popo or the police, but peace officers, because they make it their business to go out and build relationships with the people in the community. So that helps an awful lot if you're out there before something like this happens. And also, I heard the question about what you could possibly have learned from what has happened. And I'll just like to say that one of the things that I take from this is that Elizabeth City is a microcosm now of what is going on across the nation. Uh, I see now that no city, small or large, is exempt. So we are ready to do whatever we need to do to supplement what we're already doing to make sure nothing like this happens again. Uh, it didn't happen on our watch, but still we have to now police uh, the protesters, even though they're doing well, but our police department now has been drawn into it. So of course it is you know, part of our charge to determine whatever else needs to be done so that we will not have anything like this happen again because it hurts us all. Yes. You are now intimately familiar with the process of trying to get body camera footage um, accessed by the public. Is there any bigger takeaway, anything that you would really like to say to communities in terms of that overall process of accessing body camera footage? Of the law, and that's where you have to go. You have to change the laws. You know, we might talk about it, we might say what we want, but unless the law is changed, uh, it won't, uh, you know, won't matter. Uh, and I would like to see, I know someone said earlier that um, in some states, you know, they able to get them right away. I don't know what their laws are as far as the uh, body cams are concerned. But you have to go through a process here. And uh, the council uh, has submitted a, a requisition, of course, uh, to the sheriff's office. If denied, as I said earlier, then it goes on to uh, the DA's office, and then finally it will go to the uh, Superior Court. But we were told by our attorney that more than likely we will not get it because as I went read through the statutes and the law, there's nowhere where they would uh, receive But they will the family. But we're just showing, we're trying to show the family and the community that we're not just selected we are elected, and we have to be good stewards uh, of the people's resources and to let them know that they can trust us. Okay. And we, yes, sir, go ahead. How would you change the law? How would I change the law? 
you know what, I, you, I need to just give this back over to my manager because he's the one that knows all about the law because if you ask me how I would change it, I'll just say, come on now. You know, this doesn't make sense. We have to wait forever to get the body cam. 24 hours to 48 hours is enough. So let's, let's just change this uh, so you know it's not going to happen like that. Uh, but I want to see it changed as quickly as possible. And the root of it all is that you have to change your law. Thank you all so much. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, citizens. Thank you, press. Thank you all so much um, for helping us to get this word out, get this message out. Um, again, to all of the law enforcement that is in town, I want to be clear about this. To all of the citizens,